the National Broadcasting Company presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter Spy, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. These Counter Spy reports to the American people are brought to you each week at this time. Now, the case of the hideous hijacker. Oh, uh, would you care for a drink, uh, Dylan? Don't mind if I do, Mr. Shelby. Myra, would you? Uh, scotch, isn't it, Dylan? Yes. Anything for you, Carl? No, no, thank you, my dear. That's a nice view of the ocean you have, Mr. Shelby. There's nothing like a California beach house, I always say. Yeah. Right now, Dylan, I'm only interested in what you have to say about the business at hand. Yes, I, uh, I found your man. Uh huh. You're sure that he can handle this sort of thing? With the greatest of ease and experience. Here's your drink, Dylan. Thank you. Who, uh, who is this man? His name is Roxy Madeira. Madeira, huh? Roxy Madeira. Sound familiar to you, Mr. Shelby? Oh, he's the one who was released recently from the federal penitentiary? He's the one. I was Roxy's attorney before the state, um, relieved me of my practice. Tell me, Dylan, is this man, this uh, Roxy Madeira, willing to take risks? Risks that could cost lives, including his own. Listen, a life to Roxy Madeira is no more than a grain of sand. Hmm. Well, Mr. Shelby, what do you say? I say Roxy Madeira is our man. Get him. Hey, Roxy, you still dance as good as ever. Sure, Billy. I'm a regular ballet star. I miss you awful, honey. Yeah? Yeah, awful. Now it'll be like old times again. Mm, better. Let me kiss. Roxy. Never mind the kiss. Answer the door. Oh, Dylan. Hi. You took your time getting here, Dylan. Sorry, Roxy. Uh, held up in traffic. Okay, let's not waste time. Sit down. Billy, shut that phone off, huh? Yeah, all right. And go in the other room and powder your nose or something. All right. Okay, Dylan, what have you got? Well, I spoke to that um, certain party. That's the facts. Yeah, all right. The shipments consist of antibiotics. Anti-what? Uh, certain types of drugs, such as penicillin, sulfur, and oreomycin. So? These drugs are being shipped down the coast regularly by truck to certain warehouses in this area. From there, the drugs are distributed, some of them shipping overseas to military stations. So you want some of the loads hijacked? As many as possible. Who for? Why, uh, I am not free to uh, reveal names. The certain party will pay well for each load. Like what? Oh, uh, 15000 Uh-huh. And your cut? Five. Kind of greedy, ain't you, Dylan? Oh, no, I don't think it's unfair, Roxy. After all, I went through a lot of trouble. I made the arrangements. Okay, and I... okay, quit bleeding. When's the first job? Tuesday night. Now, what about your crew? I'm a one-man crew. I bring Billy along just for the kicks. Well, that's all right. After we work out the details, I'll leave the rest to you because I know the job will be done with your usual thoroughness. That's right, Dylan. When Roxy Madeira knocks off a hijack, it stays knocked off. I'll be glad when this haul is over, Vic. I'm pooped. Uh, me too, Joe. What a way to make a living, huh? 
There could be worse ways. Give me a for instance. <laughs> I'm sorry you asked the question. Hey, Vic, up ahead. Ed, it's a car blocking the road. The guy's waving us down. What a gun. Better pull up, Vic. Okay, you two, come on down. What is it? Down. Hey, look, Mac, you can't pull a thing like this. Joe! Joe! Can't pull it, huh? Roxy! Roxy, why did you do that? Because I felt like it, Billy. This is the best way to operate. Any arguments? No, Roxy. No arguments. Agent Braden, Los Angeles Counter Spy Field Office, to David Harding, Headquarters, Washington. A truckload of antibiotics was hijacked last night in this area. Both drivers murdered and bodies left on roadside. Truck missing. No further detail. We'll keep you posted. All right, you two guys. Like I told a friend, when Roxy Madera knocks off a hijack, it stays knocked off. Los Angeles to Harding headquarters. Report just received that third truckload of antibiotics has been hijacked. Pattern continues same. Both drivers murdered. Standing by for any special orders. Harding headquarters, Washington. To Agent Harry Peters, Philadelphia field office. I'm leaving here immediately by jet. We'll pick you up at the airport there. What's up, Chief? We're flying out to Los Angeles. I'll lay out the details for you later. Well, come on, Mr. Harding. Give on with the details, will you? You've had me second-guessing my head off. We're going out to Los Angeles, Peter, to supervise a hijacking investigation. Hijacking investigation. With all the big stuff going on these days, I'd have thought that would be a strictly lower echelon operation. Not when there's a threat to national security. Maybe I should keep my big mouth shut and listen. Go ahead, Chief. Peters, you're familiar with the importance of antibiotic drugs. I sure am. Penicillin did the job for me when I had that strep throat two years ago. Well, in the past two weeks in the Los Angeles area, three truckloads of antibiotics were hijacked. In each case, the drivers were murdered. Nothing to go on yet? So far, nothing. Those drugs, Peters, were not only to be made available for civilian use, but a great portion was to be shipped to our armed forces overseas. And I don't doubt some of those hijacked drugs will find their way overseas. I don't follow. We've been receiving reports from our agents in the Asian sector that American antibiotic drugs have been smuggled behind the Iron Curtain. Oh, which means that in case of an emergency, we could be short on such supplies and they could be well stocked. It could mean that. We've got a big job in front of us, Chief. Big is right, Peters. Every minute comes. For every minute he keeps me waiting, Billy, so help me, Dylan, is going to pay. He'll be here, Roxy. Give me a cigarette. Sure. Here. Don't light it. Here. It's so dark here, Roxy. It ain't so dark I can't count. The car's coming up the road. I hope it's Dylan. It better be. you, Roxy? Yeah, it's me, Roxy. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. I got caught in... In traffic, yeah, I know. Make with a payoff, Dylan. With pleasure, my friend. Here you are for the um, three jobs. It's all there. Minus the withholding tax. What? Oh, <laughs> you mean my little cut? I'll get cute. No, no, I only... Come mean... on, Roxy. You got the money. Let's get Keep back Keep your to... holder on. I got something to say to the middleman here. Well, what's on your mind? 
You. I don't like a middleman. A middleman's a leech. Oh, look. You what? look, middleman. Now I know who that certain party is on the other end of the deal. You know? Carl Shelby. He's the guy who's paying off, right? How'd you find I out? I trailed you one night to Shelby's beat shack down in Palos Verdes. I'm the kind of a guy who doesn't like to do business with a guy I don't know. Oh, oh, you, you'd like to meet Shelby, is that it? Uh, yeah, that's it. Well, that's all right, Roxy. I'll take you to Shelby. Now you will. Go there myself. I don't need a middleman to introduce me to Carl Shelby. All right, Braden. Thanks. Peters. Yes, Mr. Harding. Come in here, will you? What is this? Agent Braden just called in. Peters, it looks as if we've got our first real break in the case. They located the trucks? No. The body of a man named George Dillon was found by the state police a few hours ago in the outskirts of town. George Dillon? What's his background? A disbarred lawyer. Now, here's the tie-in Braden came up with. Dillon once represented Roxy Madeira, and, according to our records, Madeira was released from prison six months ago after serving a term for interstate hijacking. So you figure that Madeira's in on this case, hmm? Yes. Braden also found out that Dillon and Madeira were seen together recently. Madeira should have some interesting answers to our questions. Yes, he should. But Braden reports no trace of Madeira. Oh? So, Peters, yes, I want a pickup bulletin for Madeira sent to all our field officers. Get right on. Uh, wait a minute, Peters. Yeah. One more thing. Until further notice, I want an armed guard placed on every truck in the Pacific Coast area carrying antibiotics. Maybe playing both ends against the middle will work out for us. <laughs> Now, don't tell me, Shelby, you miss your middleman. Well, not for personal reasons, Roxy. But you've endangered my entire operation by murdering Dylan. Like those waves out there, it'll blow over. Maybe you didn't hear me before. The counter-spies are looking for you. Well, let them look. They won't find me here. I don't get in your way, do I, Myra? Of course not. I find you stimulating company. <laughs> See, Shelby? I ain't in anybody's way. Roxy, I, uh, I think it would be best for all concerned if you were to take a trip south, say, to Mexico. Who asked you to do any thinking for me? If I want to take a potter to Mexico, I will. If I want to stay here, I will. Just don't lay out any cook's tour for me. Uh, I'm going into my office now. There's some business that I have to take care of. Well, who's holding you here? Myra, would you care to go with me? I've, uh, got a terrible headache, Carl. Really? <sighs> Very well. Aspirin's good for a headache, Myra. Really? Yeah. But I got something even better. Give me. See what I mean? You don't waste time, do you? Do you? What do you think? I'd like a drink. So? No ice in the bucket. You'll find some in the kitchen. I'm used to Billy getting the ice. Well, now you'll have to get used to my ways. <laughs> okay. Yes? I want to see Roxy. Uh, Billy, I believe is your name. That's my name, Twinkie. Well, I won't ask you in. You already are. Where's Roxy? Don't lie. And why didn't he call me in three days? Oh, uh, why don't you ask him? I'll make this easy for you to understand. Simple. I'm sure anything you have to say will be simple. Stay away from Roxy. And if I don't, I'll beat you up so hard you look like cake batter. Well, you make your point rather colorfully. Yes, yeah, well, don't make me prove it. It seems to me that Roxy's become bored with you of his own free will. And to know you is to understand why. Why, you... Wait, I'll give you something to understand. Well, it'll take more than you. Ow, my hair! Black roots, I'll my bet. Hair, let go, let come go. on, come on, break it up. I'll kill her, so help her. Break it up, I said. There's feathers all over the let place. Let me go, Roxy, let me go. Sit down, please. 
stay there if you don't want me to bust you in the face. Sorry, Myra. This one's got no manners. Roxy, you're a rat and no good two-timing rat. Hey, no manners. She doesn't even know how to talk in front of a lady. I, I told you to stay in a chair. You don't have to worry. I'm not going to touch your light. I had an idea why you didn't call. I had the right idea. You're going to be sorry, Roxy. Real sorry. I'll have that drink now, Roxy. As soon as I get back... Where are you going? There's no telling what a jealous dame will do. I didn't like the way she said I was going to be sorry. I didn't like it at all. Get me the Countess by Field Office in Los Angeles. Countess by Field Office in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. One moment, please. Roxy! You are listening to the case of the hideous hijacker on Counter Spy. There's top listening every Sunday evening with a chime. Tonight, the big show brings you another great array of stars. Tallulah Bankhead, Ed Wynn, Fred Allen, Ed Gardner, Jack Carson, and a host of others. Also this evening, Theatre Gill on the Air presents another outstanding story. It's Theater by Somerset Maughan, and starring will be Gloria Swanson and Melvin Douglas. Now, back to Counter Spy. Harding, control car S1 to field office, Los Angeles. Agent Braden, Los Angeles field office. Braden, what about the report on those bullets? Just checked with ballistics, sir. They'll have it any second. Anything turn up at your end? Peters is still in the tavern inquiring. Call me as soon as you have that report. Will do. How'd you make out, Peters? Batting average 1,000, Chief. Yeah. Three out of three people in that tavern identified Billy Horton as Roxy Madera's girlfriend. All right, Johnson, back to the field office. Too bad Billy didn't live to finish that phone call to us. Any reports come in while you were waiting for me? Well, I've been in touch with Braden. The lab check made on dust particles in Billy Horton's clothes indicate a corrosive action of sea air for a period of weeks. It means she's been around the Bay Area for some time up to her death. And it also pins down the whereabouts of Roxy Madera. Providing they hadn't split up. Braden to Harding. Braden to Harding. Harding, go ahead, Braden. Ballistics just finished the report, Chief. The bullets which killed Billy Horton were fired from the same gun that murdered George Dillon. Chief, that's proof enough that Roxy and Billy hadn't split up. Braden. Yes, sir? Send out a special alert. Have all our patrols in this area concentrate the search for Roxy Madera in the Bay and Beach Territory. I want Madeira brought in, preferably more alive than dead. And now, Roxy, we've reached a point where you're no longer visiting. You've simply moved in. You wouldn't want me picked up, would you, Shelby? Well, you'd be much safer in Mexico. I've offered to finance the trip. But, Carl, it's not like you to be this inhospitable. Inhospitable? Myra, do you realize that he intends to remain with us from now on? Uh, now you're losing your poise. In a minute, he's going to lose some of his teeth, huh? Shelby, I'm staying here just as long as I want to stay, so get used to it. Yeah. And you, Myra, am I to understand this arrangement suits you? Well, I can't really say it doesn't suit me. Sorry. You ungrateful little... Shut up. <laughs> You animal. Get up, Shelby. The conversation's over. Get out and take a walk for yourself. The sea air will do you good. Hey, uh, get a message to meet you here, Mr. Shelby. Get in the car, Sid. Al said you had a special job you went in. Very special. You know Roxy Madeira? Yeah, I know Roxy. He the job? Yes. 
It's my wish to rid myself of Madeira permanently. I'll pay you the usual price, $1,000. Gee, uh, I don't know, Mr. Shelby. Roxy's an awful tough customer. Well, very well, then. $1,500. When? Tonight. After 10 o'clock. Where? You'll find him down at my beach house. Your beach house tonight after 10? Yeah. I'll be waiting at my office in the cannery. As soon as you finish, come there and I'll pay you. And the quicker, the better. I'll make Roxy Matera a real quick job for you, Mr. Shelby. I'll be back for the payoff at 11. Uh, what, uh, what time is it, Myra? Two minutes to 11, Carla. Why do you keep asking the time? <laughs> You'll find that out in a moment. And why'd you call me to come here to your office at this time of the night? You'll find that out in a moment, too. You're acting very peculiar. Am I? As you know, since Roxy Madeira intruded upon my hospitality, I haven't been myself. And neither have you. Are we going into that again? Oh, you needn't be so annoyed, my dear. I shan't bother to talk to you about Roxy again. The problem has already been solved. What do you mean? <laughs> The answer to that question is at the door. Hmm? Come in, Sid. Oh, Sid couldn't make it, Shelby. Roxy. Roxy, what are you doing here? Tell her, Shelby. I, uh, I, I... Shelby's got his tongue tied on account of he thinks he's seen a ghost get me fingered for a knockoff. What? Your boy Sid is in the cellar of your house, Shelby, with a head full of holes. Roxy, I... I... Shut up! Figured you'd try a stunt like that. It was all ready and waiting with his gun. No, Roxy. No, no, please, please, wait. Shelby, on the way up here, I was thinking what I should do about you. I could knock you off, but that'd be too easy for you. One slug and it's all over. So I figured I'd give it to you the hard way. Come on, Myra, baby, let's go. <laughs> See what I mean, Shelby? <laughs> the message you wanted to see me here in the lab, Mr. Harding. Something special up? Yes, very. One of our agents in Hong Kong came into possession of a parcel of American-made oreomycin. It was scheduled for transshipment to Manchuria. Huh? There's the package on the lab table. It was flown back to us by special plane. And a lab test proves what? Well, see for yourself, Peter. First, look into this spectroscope here. Hmm. Metallic presence. Specifically, zinc. That zinc was clinging almost imperceptibly to the cardboard container. And the drug container was smuggled out in a tin, or rather a zinc receptacle. Yes. Now take a look at this other spectrograph. I can't make it out. What is it, Chief? The lab technician tells me it's fish. Fish? Yes. And I think it's going to be the means for us to catch our own fish, put an end to this case. <laughs> Harding, control car S-1 to all raid squads. Take your designated positions. We're going in now. Come on, Peter. All right. A cannery, Chief. I never figured it this way. We'll go in through this door. Keep me covered. All right. There's a light in the office down there. Come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. Ready? Whatever you say. Now. Uh, All right, stand where you are. Oh, there's no need for surprise, gentlemen. I, I was half expecting you. Stand up and get away from that desk. All right. Anything you say. Carl Shelby? Yes, that's my name. You're under arrest by the United States government for espionage and complicity in murder. I had nothing to do with the murder. That remains to be proven. We know Roxy Madera is mixed up in this with you. Where is he? <laughs> It'll be a pleasure for me to tell you where Roxy is at this moment. Exactly where he is. <laughs> I'm afraid, Roxy, you've permanently destroyed Carl Shelby's equilibrium. I told you to forget about Shelby, didn't I, Myra? Concentrate on me. 
It's difficult not to. You know that. Sure. But I can't help wondering about Carl. He won't take kindly to orders. You take orders from me, or he'll take what Dylan and Billy got. Anyway, who needs Shelby now? You got the names of his contacts overseas. I'll deal with them direct. Roxy. Roxy Madeira, who takes what he wants when he wants it. <laughs> what about you? Mm, we're alike, Roxy. We're the people who take. There's another way? None. We'll go a long way together, Roxy, you and I. That's right, Myra. No stopping us. Who could that be? Carl has a key. He never rang me. Answer it, but don't open the door. Go ahead. Yes, who is it? Carter Clyde. Carter. Open up. We know you're in there, Madeira. Come out with your hands up. Roxy, what are we going to do? Get away from that door. Here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Try that for size, coppers. The house is surrounded, Roxy. You haven't got a chance. Chance, huh? Come on, Myra. Where? We'll make it out the side door and up the stairs to the road. No, Roxy, we'll be killed. Come on, I said... Roxy, please, please don't make me go with you. It's like you said, you were my kind. I don't want to die, please, Roxy. Shut don't... up, shut no. up. Go ahead, open the door. They'll kill me. Open it. Roxy, you're coming. Come out, Roxy. Hey, Myra, I'm going out there, but I'm going my way. Come in. Yes, you know. What are you doing? Get in front of me. That's the way I'm going out. You shoot me first. Cops are too polite to shoot a lady. Open that door. Please, Roxy. Open it. I'm coming out, coppers. You shoot and this dame gets it from me. Get going, Myra. Keep moving fast. You can't get away with it, Roxy. You open up and the dame gets it like I said. Keep moving, Myra. Come on over to the stairs. Faster. Up the steps. I'm behind you, Roxy. Drop your gun. Out of my way, Myra. I'm making it alone. Get him, Peters! I'll get you, coppers! I'll get you all! Well, Peters, that's the end of our trail and the end of Roxy Madera. Let's go. Tune in every week, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen next week for the exciting case of the prattling paper. When enemy agents thought they had silenced one of America's top research men by murder, they didn't know that his research had made paper talk like a black streak. How your counter spies gave this black streak a voice will be revealed for the first time next week in The Case of the Prattling Paper on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Marx B. Loeb, dramatized by Edward J. Adamson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer. Lionel Rico speaking. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Later today, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show brings you another 30 minutes of laughs with Phil and Alice, Frankie, Julius, and the whole cast. Listen later for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. And for radio's greatest spectacle, NBC brings you the big show with Tallulah, Fred Allen, Ed Wynn, and many, many more. Stay tuned for Tallulah Bankhead and the fabulous big show on NBC. NBC.